For the players, the pop culture as PlayStation podcast is fueled by the Man Shake. I lost 30 kilos in 10 months using this meal replacement shake. If you want to support the show and Max and my weight loss journey, or to even start your own, click the link in the description below. The Man Shake. Real blokes, real results. For the players. I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Max Cooper. And this is for the players, the pop culture as PlayStation podcast of the 40 years of playing PlayStation, eight plus years in that game's meeting combined. I'd thank you for joining us in this in-person PlayStation podcast show. Yeah. <laughs> this PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 8 a.m. on podcast services, including Apple Spot Apple podcast and spotify and 9 a.m on those youtubes if you'd like to take part in future conversations with us come and check out our socials facebook discord instagram and twitter all of those links can be found in the description below if you want to join us as the conversation happens head over to twitch.tv slash the pop where you can watch us record this show live where you can jump in the chat and become part of the show if you want to support the show you can tell your friends tell your family about this playstation pod if you are on podcast services be sure to give us a five star rating and a written review if if you are on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment below. I endeavor to answer every single comment. And if you want to support us financially, you can at patreon.com slash the pop as well as our merchandise store, popcultures.com slash shop, where you can buy shirts and other assorted shit with, a, with our logos on it. Puck comes through two months, prime sub. What a way to kick shit, kick shit off. Max, you are back in the room. Yeah, it's good. It's good to be back. Um, I don't miss this chair. This chair sucks. This chair uh, sucks so hard. But, Patreon. Uh, <laughs> we need a new chair. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's good to be back. It's it's just an, uh, a completely different dynamic. It is. It's it's such a different feel. It, it feels weird doing the show without headphones on. Probably um, the first one. Yeah, I mean, it's nice to know that I'm not going to be able to pause the audio this mm. week by accident because I'm just useless at that. I'm so good at pausing my recording <laughs> mid-show. But, look, we, we for the last, like, what, six months, every show has started with some sort of COVID update. So, like, look, we're here yeah, in Victoria. Up, update. It's, update. We're done. It's still here. <laughs> However, uh, like, here in Victoria, in Australia, we have finally had our Freedom Day, where, they, where the government essentially went, look, you're 70% double vaxxed. Just fucking get out there. Get, get going. Would you see? Did you see the good news? Our our local area of Geelong hit ninety five percent single dose mm, ratings mm. yesterday, so they they actually expect us to hit that eighty percent mark next week. Yeah, man, it's gonna look good. It's gonna be great. Yeah, so there's a couple there's a couple different steps about as the va- vaccines progress, but one of the one of the current changes is that you can have people in your home again, mm. and uh, you know as long as you're double vaxxed, I'm, I am you too. So shit shit's good all up in this place, but it's so good just to see people mm. again like it's interesting so like uh, so yesterday friday a time of recording was uh the day of freedom right yeah so i essentially i went and hung out with my work friends outside of work but even then it was weird because like i see them every day i they're the same crew that i see all the time but like seeing them in a different location just added a whole different dynamic mm. Like, so our friend of the show, Craig, was was um, was meant to come over today, but something's come up, so we're going to catch up tomorrow. But, like, it's just, that idea is just, it's so good. Going to watch that crown jewel? Oh, apparently it's not that bad. <laughs> shitty, uh, shitty uh, pay-per-view, but apparently, like, the, the match, some of the match is not that bad. But, yeah, so, like, it's bizarre. It's really, really bizarre, because we're, we're at a point of no turning back now. We yeah. can never return to what we were before in terms of lockdowns and shit. So, like, this is it. This is our normal again. I hope so. It's pretty awesome. I, I'm excited because uh, uh, now that now that we've got this stuff, it, it means that there is no more, especially, well, here in Victoria at least, there is no more quarantining for those who are double vaccinated when they come into the state, which means my parents can come and visit without having to quarantine on the way in or out. Yeah. Like, it's such a good feeling. That's awesome. So, but yeah, like, so obviously that's, like, that's, that it's unquestionably fantastic. Yeah. Like, because one of the biggest hurdles that you had is they could come visit in theory, but then they'd have to, like, 14 days and, you know, that's just yeah, unreasonable. So, but it was an extra $3,000 
per way on each trip for that hotel quarantine yeah. for 14 days and now that's just gone no like you know that's a, that's a big barrier i mean we're still with the, the only restrictions that's still really here that's kind of sucky is that metro still can't play with regional yeah so which like is, i still can't see my sister you obviously can't see your my dad. dad which we're saying that though so everything is looking to if all everything goes as a planned that the the next step is on the 5th of november so the 6th being my birthday don't forget it uh the 6th of november is my birthday uh and we're going out for lunch so then we'll be recording a show have, in, the, have in you, the afternoon. Have you booked? Sure have. Already? Yep. It's like- <laughs> the second that we knew the date and the second that we could guarantee a thing, I went pew, and booked something. Uh, just to sort nice of go to know I wasn't thing. invited, but sure. What well, numbers, brother? They could be like, oh yeah, no, droops, I, tens. I, I get it. I get it. Yeah, that's fine. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's mostly, f- it's just family. You're so. like, oh, I'll, I'll bring you like a, a leftovers. Yeah. Here's like, the, here's the, here's the, <laughs> the, the, the wings. You can like pick the chick, pick the chicken off them. Uh, but yeah, so. So I'm very excited for that to have to have him come back uh, over this way and we can catch up for my birthday. So it adds a nice extra layer of celebration mm-hmm. on it, which is cool. Uh, I can go to the wrestling again. I was supposed to have a show tonight uh, and tonight and then uh, on on the sixth. So it would have been, you know, lunch. Probably I wouldn't have recorded the show. <laughs> go to wrestling, done the show on the Sunday. Would have been fantastic. But they got canned for uh, different reasons. Uh, however, I've got two shows at the end of the month. I've got one on the 20th, one on the 27th. Heads up, we have to record on the Sundays of those days. Probably should have told you. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that. I thought they were going to get canceled, so it worked out well. But having that just sense of look, coming to look forward to, and, and it's looking like it's going to happen. Like, I'm feeling very hopeful today. Mm. And I love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> it's like, cause yeah, last night as I went and caught up with caught up with some work friends, and so obviously for those that, don't, that know my my day job, like you know, gaming hobbies is therapy. So we do a lot of tabletop role playing games, and like, apparently the new season of Critical Role was out, and it's you know out of the out of the group of us, uh, everyone but myself and and my friend Meg, we've never seen it before, and they're like, come watch it. We'll, we'll see if we can convert you. No. No, Meg and I sat there like the two fucking old people in the Muppets and just berated that fucking show. <laughs> it was awesome. So what is it? What is it that you don't like about it? Is it the is it the fact that they're clearly performers and they're no no no, they didn't perform enough. Okay, I like the way he'd been delivered to me. So for those who don't know, Critical Role is a, a Twitch series where a bunch of very well known voice actors, including PlayStation alums Laura Bailey and Ashley Johnson, uh, are. Uh, play D and D together, uh, and you know because they are voice actors and performers. Like you know, I was under the impression that there was this nth level degree of like just performance, and it was really not any of that. It was kind of bum. I wonder if that's purely because you're coming in at the start of a new season. They kind of they, they haven't you did s- their roles well yet. You say that, but then they're like, "Oh, you can, why don't you just watch season two? Like, how many episodes is it? Ah, oh, it's 120 episodes. I'm, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, I'm like yeah, about three hours each. Like, no, no, no. So you guys don't love the characters. You have Stockholm syndrome because you feel committed after all that. Like, I probably should like this. Yeah. It's n- it wasn't very good. Um, I, it, I I look. I admittedly probably expected more, mm. but. The way it had been sold to me was this was like the be all and end all of of D and D shows, and you know, Critical Role actually you know hurts D and D because of the high level of performance that they do, and you know, it makes this un like this the Mercer effect, yeah, the Mercer effect, this unreasonable unreasonable expectations around what D and D is, and I'm gonna fucking tell you after watching that one yesterday, the wrestling one that I did a couple months ago, fucking way better than at least episode one of Campaign Three. I mean, the the issue is, is that no one really plays D&D like that. No. Like, no one has those awesome setups. No one has that level of the setups didn't, value. The didn't change like, anything it's, to me. It was re- it's really just a, um, yeah, it's a very different experience. Mm. Like, if, you, if you're if you looking, if you're watching Critical Role and be like, I want to play D&D, that's not what you're going to get. No, no, no. <clears throat> but, yeah, because it, it was all like dumb like the voices and stuff were cool but like I, it didn't quite have the pageantry i think it's the word it just didn't have it and I, i'm a bit, a bit dumbed out about it but i did also enjoy tearing it a new one so you know that was a good good part for me oh, that's good yeah and then yeah so tonight now i got no plans uh so i don't want to do it tonight but like i'm you know i'm kind of originally because i was invited to this as a late like nightclubs here i come well i'm you know i'm feeling fucking ready to go like that's 
I'm, I'm going. To, I'm going to work tonight. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. Freedom Day, work night. Yes, and like, because like I'm. Fe- like, I I've always been a bit of a homebody, but like, I am also you know energetic and wanting to go see things and well, do people. I'm I'm ready to. It's funny. So go I'm, out I'm catching up with friends tomorrow, and they, these the people I'm catching up with is my my board game group. Yeah. And we're like, you know, they've all moved into their new houses that I haven't been to yet. So, we're, you know, we're going to go go and do that. And they're like, oh, you know, what are we playing tomorrow? We, we literally can't play anything because the last person in our group is stuck in Metro Melbourne. Yeah. Like, we, we, just, we shouldn't play anything while, while we... Because obviously all the games that we play are those big legacy style games Correct, where yes. <laughs> you kind of have to have everyone there to, to, to do it. So... I actually have no idea what we're doing tomorrow. Even if you just hang out, I yeah, think that pretty might much, be Yeah, that's pretty much what I think we're going to yeah. do. Basically. And also, rate a type R for the resub as well. Thank you very much. I'd spot that a couple minutes ago. I didn't spot it a couple minutes ago. Thank you. Yeah, man. It's good to, it's good to hang out with people. It's just good to fucking see you. And like, Don't touch me. Touch, I'm touching <laughs> me. It's just... It's, just, get it's, your, it's get fucking... Your nasty ass hands. It's just fucking <laughs> insane to have people in a vicinity. Again. Yeah, no, it's, it's been really good. Like, I, I went and saw my nieces before the yeah. show. That was fun. They're a little bit crazy for my liking, but, you know, it is what it is. No, it's like, yeah. Kids. She's like, cool, I'm not going to see you again now. I'm I've got, gonna... I come in, I've got, like, I've got a, I've got a, a text of mustache on my elbow. She drew all over my shorts. She hid my shoes. Yeah. You know, all that fun stuff. Jerk. What a bite. <laughs> what a bite. Other than that, other than our recent freedoms, how was how has your week been? Yeah, it's yeah. It's, nothing's really changed. Yeah. Um work is still just as busy as it was. Uh like, like not much has changed for me in between the Freedom Day and not having Freedom Day. So, you know, it's all the same to me. I still, you know. It's fine. It's been a week. It's all right. Yeah. We had we had some we had some dramas earlier in the week. My kid, my kid's getting one of her last teeth through. Oh, okay, so she bit off her food. But the other day she's like, "I'm feeling pretty good. I'm gonna eat." So she ate all of her lunch, Bled. snacked, ate all of her dinner, ate all of my dinner, went to bed, and then half an hour after my wife and my kid have gone to bed, all I hear is this scream. I run in. There's just vom everywhere. And I'm like, what happened? She's like, well, the kid snuggled into me to give me kind of them went, Bleh. and I'm like, Ugh. and like, I'm one of those sympathy spewers. Oh, and I'm no. walking, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm carrying my kid. She's covered in vomit. I'm just like, gagging the whole way down the hallway. And then she throws up all over me again. I'm just like, <laughs> hold it in, threw her in the shower. And Ellie's like, I'll clean it up. I'm like, no, it's all right. You guys just, you guys get yourselves organized. You can sleep in, sleep in this room tonight. I'll, you know, I've got to go to work anyway. I'll, I'll clean up in here. I'm just like, <laughs> wrapping all this stuff up in the towels, dumping it off. Oh. Just setting fire to it. And then the next morning she's like, she thought it was great. She's like, this is the best. Uh, after the initial upsetting of like her throwing up. Mm. 10 minutes later after she'd showered me clean up, she's like, this is the best. Want more to eat now? Cause I feel light. I feel energized. Yeah, it's like it's time to party. <laughs> and, uh, oh, it's not man. Absolutely horrid. The amount of washing that has to be done after, oh my God. like, all the bed sheets, the, the clothing, the, the floor, just... Vomiting ain't fun. No. 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 Not at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> What about your week? How's your week? My <laughs> week uh, didn't have any vomit did, in did, it. It wasn't covered in vomit? No vomit for my week, which I appreciate. No, my week was standard. Nothing really exciting uh, happened. Uh, just mostly more week things. Just work, that sort of stuff. Uh, uh, my my new role officially came in Woo. and they got backdated. So I now earn a whole extra $19 a fortnight. So totally worth all the extra stress. I um, can't wait. Better uh, than nothing. Better than nothing. Very, very true. But no, like, yeah, the, the week has been, been a week. It's been working and, and ha- you know, not doing a whole bunch of things. I have played some games this week, so we'll get into the section when we talk about the playing the games now. Uh, I have I have been able to make a little bit more time for games this week. Not a lot, because I have been doing a lot of extra hours. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been helping set up uh, a different site for Gamer up in Colac, which is about an hour-ish from here. So I went and did like a full honking day there went back to work and finished up my stuff I had to do here in Geelong and then home. And then the next day was a long one again. Like it's, yeah, which is shitting me because like I need to get back in my gym routine and if these longer hours are going to fuck me, they're going to fuck me. 
It's going to be inconvenient. But like I have spent a little bit of time this week, uh, or a little bit of time, most time I have spent this week is with Story of Seasons. Oh my God. Yeah. Still I'm playing Story so of Seasons. I'm so glad you're still playing a game that came out like two years ago. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, and because no, it's, it's been that thing. Like with these long days, I've come home and I just need that meditative experience. So I boot up Story of Seasons. It's the game that I know. It's the game that I love. And I can do it with my eyes closed. And I just thought hoeing grounds and picking turnips and, and plucking weeds and feeding my chickens and, you know, just doing the things that are just nice and zen for me, which is which is fine. The game is still is still absolutely fantastic. Additionally, I have been spending a lot more time with Far Cry 6. Now, that game, from what I'm experiencing, is going to be a unit. It's going to be a big game. I don't think, I've not touched Far Cry I don't think I'm going to see credits in it for a little while because even where I'm at right now, I've, like I've put... I, I, what I feel like is a number of hours, at least for me. And I feel like I've barely scratched the surface of just this one island. Mm. And there's two other ones to go. Three other ones to go. Three other ones. Fuck, three other ones to go. Like, and I'm I'm not like, uh, uh, I'm, I'm golden pathing it to an extent, as in like, I'm just doing the main mission. Something pops up along the way. I might clear a checkpoint or I might, mm. I'm not going to go out of my way to do these bullshit side stories. So I am having that main focus, but it's just not, you know, it's just, it just doesn't seem to be going away. There's more of it, which is great because I'm enjoying it, but it's just like, there's so much Far Cry. Yeah. It can be daunting at times. Yeah. And like I said, look, still really good. I still have, I'm still having some performance issues in, in cutscenes, which is weird because I mean, something that you weren't having, Mm. um, but yeah, look, it's, it's still good. Still plays the same. I am enjoying it. I am, I did some cockfighting. In the game, you know, finally. Did we talk about that last yeah, week? Yeah, I think a little bit. Yeah, which is essentially Tekken. I did talk about that last week, you know, the thing about it. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's it's more Far Cry. Still loving it. Still enjoying it. Blowing shit up. So what I've been doing is listening to a podcast and just like shooting shit and clearing bases and stuff like that. It's got, thankfully the, and I just kind of pause it when there's a story beat coming in. Because other than that, it's just the same minutia. And, yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's more Far Cry and for better or worse I'll, it's up to you on whether that's a good thing or a bad thing but for me it's a good thing now speaking of things that just won't end <laughs> I know you yeah. you are so close so I'm I'm literally at what I am, can only imagine is the final boss for Tales of Arise um, I'm just shy of 30 hour mark uh, and I have golden path this so uh, the game is very clearly uh, uh, from where I'm up to now is, gl- is very clearly separated into two parts or two acts mm-hmm. and at the second act the game realizes that you're finishing the game so it hits you with a bunch of exposition it kind of just dumps it on you all at once which can be daunting and can be tedious mm-hmm. so I because I'm playing with Japanese audio English subtitles have to read everything mm-hmm which makes it even more daunting. And for uh, for a lot of the time, so I played for, for instance, I played for four hours last night. I spent maybe three hours in cutscenes last night with very little actual physical gameplay. Again, not that that's a bad thing. It does have, when you when you get here, there are some holes that in the story that need to be filled and they do a very good job of filling that. And because your party, uh, at the moment, I have a party of five or six, I believe, it's not just about the protagonist. Each of those each of those players that are on this journey with you all have their own stories and reasons to be where they are and why they're traveling with you. So it's trying to fill all the stories at once. And I think it does a, it, it does a good job of doing that, but I can see that uh, some people may see it as tedious because there's not much gameplay in that section. So uh, last night, I think I hit the, hit the boss room at about four o'clock this morning and I'm like, if this is one of those typical JRPGs, I'm looking at a multi-stage boss fight. I'm looking at a bunch of cutscenes afterwards. I don't have it in me to see it through at four o'clock in the morning. I'll save it. So that's probably what I'll do tonight. Nice. Right. Finish the last of it. Well, it'd be cool to finally A, get across <laughs> the finish line and to have that final thought. But um, I, I, the story took a really, the, the story takes you to some wonderful places and it really, it's really interesting how they get there. Mm. Um, there's a few twists and turns. Uh, I'm hoping to do um, a spoiler cast with a few friends at the show. Um, hopefully that'll be up soonish. Um, I've obviously, they're just waiting on me to finish it. 
um and i think it'll be a fantastic discussion for for those who are interested uh because the story does really touch on a lot of uh interesting thing uh lots of ugh, lots of interesting things uh you know the slavery between the two races the discrimination between between the two people uh and how you know as it just the the social inequalities of the two uh between the ruling and and, and those who are ruled over um yeah they touch on it really in in really interesting ways and it's not um it's not too in your face about it which is good nice so yeah it'll be it'll it'll be a very interesting discussion i think i think it'll be great because the individuals i know that you've that you've selected um probably the best people to chat to about it yeah at least from a content space and a knowledge space as well yeah. so i think i think it'll be pretty pretty sweet uh additionally uh i did finally finally sit down with back for blood this week uh so the code was provided to, oh so we should mention uh tales of arise okay, uh, and you. story of seasons both from turn left distribution big thank you uh, no, Ubisoft. Tal- tales was from bandai was from bandai, bandai. my bad bandai australia bandai uh and uh, uh ubisoft for far cry so uh we were provided <laughs> codes for back for blood from by coach media uh so they gave they, they nice they gave us since gave us a squad's worth of codes yep. one for you one for me so i gave one to a friend of ours craig the mullet show um now he's like i'm not really a big zombie guy i'm like well i'm gonna give you code anyway <laughs> And he's like, I'm not really a big first person guy. I'm like, come on, this will be fun. We can carry, I, I can carry you. It'll be a laugh. Let's just have some fun. Because mm. uh, obviously I played the beta with you. So I kind of knew what I was getting into. He really had no idea. So we jumped in and he's trying to learn the controls as as, as we go. And we were playing, well, we wanted to just be us and two bots was yep. the original plan. But then they paired us up with some other jerks. And you know, you can turn matchmaking off. So it will pay you with. Two nah, bots. I didn't know that uh yeah so we got we got these random jerks and like they were fine and like we were kind of helping each other out and i was kind of covering for craig as he was you know getting a hang of it all and once we got into this like the second area he did sort of get that momentum back up which was good but like they they were clearly impatient we're playing on recruits we've been playing on the hard difficulty so there was no reason for them to be impatient it's like clearly everyone's on easy calm your shit um but yeah no it was good it was good like so it is fun with that full squad because I never played with the full squad in the bad thing, which yeah. is you and me in bots. Um, so having the full squad w- was fun. Uh, being able to uh, re- like you know revive each other and get that teamwork going. So so far the levels that I have played are near identical to actually they are identical to the beta. There yeah. hasn't been any change. I have gone in solo. Uh, but I've not progressed any further mm-hmm. than that. Most because I was having a conversation at the same time, so it was kind of like it was with it being a can't pause game. It was difficult for me to hold, to hold the two things at once. Yeah. So I was like, "Well, I'll try this again when I'm when I can give it my full focus, um, and then we'll go from there." So eventually, Craig just got shitty at the game. He wasn't he wasn't having a good time, which checks out. He gave me all the reasons to say that he wouldn't have a good time, and I'm like, "You might have a good time." He's like, "I'm probably not going to." And then he tried it. To his credit, he's like. Like, I don't believe you, but I'll try it. Sure enough, didn't have a good time. So it's on me. Um, but I, I'm very grateful and appreciative that he took the time to uh, pander to my request and fucking hate it anyway. So that was pretty cool. Have you played any more this week? Uh, a little bit. Uh, I'm, I'm right at the end of Act 1. I haven't played too much more. Uh, the only two games I've played this week really are Diablo 2 and Tales. Diablo 2 is an absolute shitstorm mm. at the moment. Uh, basically they released a 20 year old game on 20 year old servers and because there's so much information out in the world now on how to uh, farm for high-end gear in a fast way or in, like in a like a um, what's the word I'm looking for uh, in a timely fashion an efficient way mm. uh, their, their servers can't keep up because they have to basically reconnect to the servers every time you start a new game and you have to create a new game to respawn the enemies once you've cleared an area so every 90 seconds people are refreshing their server lobbies to get to create a new server to redo that 90 second run again mm. and um they're essentially ddosing the, the servers and the potatoes are just failing yeah so last week they bought a patch in for playstation 5 which broke the play button oh yeah, that's right yeah so that was fun the back uh, they reverted that patch so it's now working again. And earlier this week, they put in another patch where you will be put into a queue now if the if the servers are overloaded. With the uh, small t- uh, with the fine print of hey, if the queue's really big, you won't see your number going down. You'll just have to sit there and wait until you get in. Please do not refresh the server list because it will re put you at the back of the queue. 
Interesting. So that's that's been fun. Uh, the times I play, there's generally no queue or it's below five people. So you're probably waiting just a few minutes, not too bad. But um, you would think that with all that Blizzard Activision cash, they'd be able to, you know, have some functioning servers. But because it's a purely online game, like if you're playing offline mode, this obviously doesn't affect you at all. But if you're playing online... And the, the online is a big part of the yeah. game. So it's kind of odd for them to like not have that that set up behind them. But it's also sounds very Activision and Blizzard. Yeah. And as the chat says, it sounds like they need new servers. That is very true. Yeah. And lawyers are expensive. They are getting a little bit fucked right now. Yeah. Which is good for them <laughs> because they deserve it. Um, the other thing that I have been playing this week and I haven't, look, admittedly, I haven't put enough time into it mostly because of my busy week. Uh, a couple of days before release, uh, we were provided a review code for the latest in the Dark Pictures Anthology, that is the House of Ashes. Uh, it's a game that we did a preview on a little while ago. Uh, we got we were lovely, uh, kindly uh, given an invite to a keynote uh, uh, speaky thingy. Yeah, that one. Uh, we got to see a little bit of the game. So I am not that far into it. Uh, full disclosure, I only installed it this morning. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so, yeah, busy, yeah, busy I haven't week. even opened it yet. I haven't had a chance. Yeah, so I'm... I would barely say a couple of hours in. Mostly because it's not landing. Really? Yeah. I must admit, and this is, this is going to open me up to all bunches of ridicule, but every time I see this game... All I can think about is High School Musical because of the uh, yeah, actually, actually Tisdale. <laughs> well, it's well one thing that's y- you're you're gonna be fine because her face render in this game is bad. Oh, really? It, like it's 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 not good. It's it's not good. Oh no. So th- here's yeah, the thing. Yeah. So the setup for the the setup for the the game itself is that uh, there was a temple in two thousand something something BC where a gentleman in a card, which is uh, now Iraq, uh, was sort of sacrificing individuals because mm-hmm. of this plague that was going on. This is all something you find in the first like twenty minutes of the game, uh, and then eventually there's they discover that there's some sort of monster in the catacombs under this temple, and that's what's killing all the people. Uh, and then cut to black. Now you're in two thousand three. You are playing a series of five. It's five players. Yeah, so four U.S. Marines of varying rank and a, an Iraqi soldier. And then you fall into these, into the catacomb or into this tomb, uh, and then you are then fighting the monster in almost a predator sort of setup. It makes okay. clicky noises and everything, and and the story is like very similar to like Little Hope and uh, Man of Medan. It's just a like how are these characters intermingling with each other? Because in supermassive fashion, it is all about that choice and decision. You get to dictate the the choices that they make, the conversations that they have, how these characters present themselves among everybody else, and then you just keep going the story forward. So even in the early days that I have right now, now granted there is certainly a lot more time in, I don't know how long the game is, is. however, right now, none of the characters are super likable to me. Like there are some that I, I can see the beginnings of something interesting, but like Ashley Tisdale character, not doing anything for me. Uh, her, her name is uh, Rachel King. Uh, then there's her husband, who is a, a, a senior ranking officer who comes in and sort of takes over the mission. He's bland, but I think he's supposed to be bland until you until he kind of does something cool later. It's the sort of the feel that I'm getting, like he's going to take a little bit of while to build up. Uh, there is uh, two uh, standard Marines that you sort of meet when they go to Iraq. One of them seems really engaging. This is this more Southern gentleman. He seems kind of interesting. But, uh, and the other German is kind of a bit bland as well. Yeah. The Iraqi soldier, though, is an interesting dynamic. So, I, from a, even from a storytelling perspective, I liked it's a different dynamic. Because even at the start of the game, I said dynamic a lot. Even at the start of the game, like, there's a, a the Akkadian and another individual who is from a, uh, they're the ones, they're essentially the ones that set, they're sacrificing to mm-hmm. their god to get rid of this plague. So, there's a moment that you get to make the choice. Like, do you, you know, is it a friend of my friend, is my, a friend of my enemy is my friend sort of scenario? Or can you betray them and it kind of sets up the, the the feed for what i think this the main thread is and this comes with the idea of having this iraqi soldier uh in in, yep. in, in the in the squad 
uh so they, yeah because like he he's introduced like separately and then he kind of gets called into a, a confrontation which is this something you can see in the trailer so there's this co- there's this confrontation where they're shooting at each other and then the ground is fucking caves out from under them they all fall into this tomb that's when all the all the all the things happen uh in terms of the faces looking weird it is some of the characters look uncanny valley weird and i think the most prominent one is ashley tisdale Mm. the other characters look like characters they're like there is a little uncanny uncanny valley to them because they do they're trying to go that ultra realistic look but yeah. it's just a little bit too jank to make it not come together and then it feels like with ashley tisdale they've tried to put her face onto a smaller head but just by like grabbing the corners and bringing it in because okay. it doesn't it her her skull looks weird uh it's so it's yeah however other things the game looks really, really good. Like I'm playing it on PS5, so the world itself looks fantastic. There are some times when it doesn't, but like it is this weird sort. There are they've clearly focused on some things and not yeah. others, and this is very similar to the, some of the issues that we had with uh, Little Hope. Was that you can really tell where they prioritize their time, especially in their working from home environment over the last you know 18 months. Because some shots look fantastic, and then one shot you can I can almost see the <laughs> so there's the scene where uh, the Iraqi soldier is walking across a courtyard into what would be his house, and you can almost see where the floor and the you know the green floor and wall would be, and now they've pasted shit over the top because he kind of floats his way across the courtyard and doesn't <laughs> it? It's it's not as bad as as that. I am sort of exaggerating, but like I looked at, it, I'm like I can clearly tell that yeah. this has been done in the mocap and this is where the camera was and this is what the floor. Yet sometimes in like especially the cutscenes, it just looks tremendous. Yeah, uh, like yeah, and then there's there are times where sort of certain. Um, Things in the cutscene are a bit jank compared to because they once again very similar to what was the game that was on that uh it, oh shit what was it called you talking about until dawn not until dawn it was similar it was when you use your mobile phone in it it's called oh the um the detective one that had the chick from uh yeah from it was one of the play- uh, it was one of the it was one of the PlayStation um. Not Playlink. What, what was it yeah, called? Yeah, was it, it was, was it called Playlink? Play it was a Playlinky game, but I can't think of what it was called. Yeah, it was like that. That's um. Oh fuck me! Why is like that gone from my head? But yeah, so in that game, whatever it is called, because I can't remember it right now, that you can tell they very clearly prioritize face face capture. Yeah, because some other things were just not looking that good, and then I think the same thing applies here. Yeah, for better or worse. Uh, gameplay itself is what you expect you are using the you know the compass and you're picking your dialogue options from that way so that includes the whole branching butterfly effect sort of setup that they have and finding the secrets from the world finding the little tab well in this case it's tablets previously it was pictures provide to provide that uh, uh premonition to look at the future outcome uh where and one one of the big selling points of this and this was part of the preview this was part of the trailer is that there is now a fully movable 360 camera so it previously it was a camera that could only kind of like it would max out at the screen corners and you would get just slight tilts yeah uh it was not a way out reese bees it was it was uh there was not a way out and it, it'll it'll come to me later I'll, when i'm when i'm done talking i'll uh i'll, I'll you googleize it but um Yes, yeah, so, 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 uh, yeah, so there are moments where you are, like, an example is early on, you're in this hut, and the free camera is just having a really shit time, and it's like, because you're getting, wa- like, because it's, is it's- it, Is it having a shit time because it's clearly colliding with the, with the in-game assets, or- I, th- I think in order to avoid it, collect, you know, hitting a wall, it, it's coming and scoping in. Yeah, but, I mean, a lot of games do that, because otherwise you're going to- your camera's going to be outside the wall. Yeah. And like, that's what it's doing. So it's kind of like, because they've, they've, and uh, to make matters worse, it is in a wide, sc- like a, like okay. a, I got, uh, not an, like an ultra, like a, like a movie, a movie ratio, whatever the, whatever like the movie ratio is. Not is. four, three. Cause that's a square. It's not nine. It's not nine, nine by 16. Cause that's a standard HD. It's like whatever the next one down is two point something, whatever the, it's the fucking not ultra wide, not quite like the hateful eight, but standard movie widescreen uh so when you then zoom in you just get a fucking side of someone's head 
Yeah. Like, it, like they're clearly trying to avoid the clipping, and but sadly, it kind of locks it in. And then and then the camera is trying to correct itself, knowing very well that it's zoomed in on the individual. And it just gave me a little motion sickness feeling. I'm like, oh, oh, that's a rough feeling. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was, that's fine. Like, I haven't finished it yet. I will get there. Uh, like, it's got, I feel it might be a slog, but I hope it picks up soon. But it was little, I think Little Hope just hit me in such a way that I really enjoyed because it was a very silent hilly in mm. its sort of delivery. Um, hidden Agenda. Thank you, Reverend Park. Park comes through with the facts. Hidden Agenda. That's the one. Uh, yeah, so I will spend some time with it. I, I, the all the army stuff isn't really my my forte either. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. So that's probably probably why it's sort of difficult to pull me pull me into that. Not not feeling that mystical sacrifice temple. No, like once again, one haven't you still haven't seen the creature oh, okay. yet? So like you get like a little side glance of him. And you go, oh, I don't know what that is. But I know if you've bought the collector's edition for whatever reason, you just straight see it. It's as a miniature that comes in the box. You know, because they all the preview footage was all like, ooh, what do what it looks like? Yeah, here it is. Uh, they might do one of those Spider-Man things where it's like, don't open the box so you finish the game because you'll spoil yourself. Yeah, potentially. Depends how how much, how how key the monster is to the overall story, I suppose. Yeah. Here's the key selling point. Anyways, I got a bit more time with it. I'm not there yet, but we will get there. And anything else? That was it. That was it Thanks for everything I played this week. All right, before we jump into the news, <laughs> uh, before we jump into the news, we'll do what we do each and every week, which is our Get Less Fat update. So for those that don't know, I have lost over 35 kilos using a product called The Man Shake. It is a meal replacement shake that I am an ambassador for that also helps power this show. So each and every week, Max and I come together, we sit down, and we, uh, in order to keep ourselves accountable on our weight loss journeys, we share how our week has been. Max, as I said, you've lost up to 15 kilos at the moment. Yeah. Where are you at this week? How has it been? Because the man challenge finished up, but we, neither of us did it. <laughs> I went so strong the first week, and then I kind of just forgot about it. Um, terrible, I know. Uh, this week's been fine. Uh, I haven't had many shakes this week. I've been pro- I've, I've been pretty naughty this week, actually, so um, probably not good. Uh, I, I don't have any numbers for you because I haven't checked. <gasps> I know, right? Terrible. Um, I'm still hitting my... Uh, I'm still hitting all those, like, you know, the daily step goals mm. and all that fun stuff. With the nature of the work that I do, I'm, I'm sitting at like 15,000 steps before 8 o'clock Easy. in the morning, so I'm not, I'm not concerned about that. Um, my meals have been pretty erratic this week, actually. Um, yeah, I've been naughty. Mm. The, sna- the snacks have gotten me this week. Oof. Yeah. I've so, had... Is that, is that, is that um, peanut butter and jelly chocolate that got me this week? <laughs> so good <laughs> i've had a very good week oh, at least week. one of us did uh so a couple of things a uh the cookies and cream flavor finally released yeah i've known about it for like months it but good? it's very very good i'll, I'll are, they, are they doing a lady version yeah okay it's on the way because uh, i've got some familiar as well i think uh, ali wants me to get her some yes yeah, so I'll, I'll i'll put some in a little baggie for you Sounds good. it's got a little it's literally so it's kind of good vanillary but it's got literal cookie chunks in it oh nice oh it's fantastic um yeah so i bought a couple of bags and they're on their way as well so that's number one so it's kind of helped my rotation mm-hmm. uh you know previously it was the birthday have you, cake run, have you run out of birthday cake no yet? i still got a bag left i'm gonna hold on that one for a little while until I, until I feel it. Uh, and additionally, my weigh in this morning, I weighed in at 105.6. Nice. So last week I was 107. So I've lost at least a kilo and a half in the last so week that, somehow. It's that, it's that weight of freedom coming off you? No, I think it's an actually straight like loss of lean muscle mass because I've gone to the gym in so long. The gym is still closed. No, the, well, no, mine's open, man. Like, because okay. like it's the smallest gym anyway, so they don't have to worry about the caps per se. Because like, there's never at any point been more than X amount of people in there. Yeah. So like, it's open twenty four hours now. Just fucking go. It's getting in there. Just wear a mask when you're not on a on a thing. So yeah, I've lost like a, I've lost one point yeah one point something kilos this week. So that puts me a, a close to thirty seven kilos lost in total, um, which is fantastic. So I'm I'm essentially five and a half kilos away from my goal. My goal was, was always been to get to hundred kilos or as close to, mm-hmm. and I I had spent so long at that 107, 108 kilo mark. I was really kind of devastated. So to to have that push through again now to to go over on the other side of that i i i cannot complain at all i cannot complain i'm super super happy and i've not even changed anything like i i don't know just 
something's happened in the last couple of days. It's kind of my body's gone. Oh yeah, let's lose weight again. Which can only be, I can only think is just <laughs> my 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 the muscles that I gained from the gym earlier in the year are fading away. Your body knows that we're in we're, we've got freedom now. You're like I need to look sexier when I go out. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the thing. I've you know I've I've got the world to impress now. Yeah. But speaking of, and on a side note, by the way, so one thing I've discovered, I think I talked about this last week. Did I? I don't know. I don't know, because I don't know what you're going to talk about now. Oh, so one of, <laughs> one of the problems that I have with my weight loss journey- Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, with my weight loss journey is I have uh, a lot of like residual fat and fucking skin just on my stomach, right? So one of my one of my biggest fears has always been my guts hanging over my shorts or my guts hanging out from under a shirt, even when I was bigger. So my stomach actually hangs lower now because there's nothing in it. So what I've discovered, I say discovered as if I didn't know they existed, is long tees. They hang all the way down in my crutch area. So like there's no chance, no matter how I put my arms in the air, that my shit's going to fall out. It's fucking awesome. I want long tees all the time. It's all I wear. Long tees are the best. Yeah. It's long fantastic. Tees, tees like it's, it's a shame all the wrestling shirts that I have don't come in long tees. Because if fuck if they did. Oh. But yeah, it's it's been an absolute lightsaver. It's it's weird how much confidence it's given me just having a shirt that's slightly longer. Mm. It's it's insane because like part, I think I, I know I've talked about that that uh, this on here before, but like this journey has been such a mixed battle because I can't tell you the last time I weighed this much, mm. one hundred and five. I can't tell you. Like it ha- it would have to be. Before I was 14. Has to be. I'm 32 now. So like for the longest time in my life, I have been a big dude. And my brain is literally incapable of not seeing me Mm. the old way. And it will get there eventually. But I do think there is some hard body dysmorphia in there that will never go away. So... That constant fear of my shit hanging out under my shirt or whatever helped. It hasn't helped because like I've put, okay, there are days where I'm like, I've put all this effort, I've all this sacrifice mm. and I still feel like shit and I'm not winning. Like I'm thinner, but I feel like I'm not. Yeah. It sucks. So like just, it's insane how just a slightly longer shirt feels so much better. Mm. Because, you know, I'm, I'm wearing jeans that are like, you know, uh, was I'm, I was a 44 and now I'm a 36. So what's that like? Two, one, two, three, four, five, five, four or five sizes smaller. I'm in an XL shirt now compared to like a four or five XL shirt previously. And like the long T fits across the shirt, and the, the chest, and it's long enough. Like I should be living the dream. But it's fucking insane how some days I'm, I it, it just my brain yeah. wants to cave in on itself. But if you want to support Max and I on our weight loss journey, or maybe even start your own, you can. There is a link in the description. It is bitly bit ly slash ftp manshake. You don't even have to buy anything, dude. Just click the link, give us some love, and maybe if you're inclined, you could uh, change your life. Start start your own journey. Sound fun. Anyway, let's get into the section called Inform the Players. We tell you about what happened this week in PlayStation. Max, I've done enough talking. It's your turn now. Uh, let's kick off with some Sony news. So yesterday, out of nowhere, in typical PlayStation fashion, Sony announced a new state of play broadcast, which will take place- It was like two in the morning. Yeah. I came home from like out being freedom and I went, what the fuck? Yeah, so it's set to take place Wednesday, the 27th of October. That is uh, this coming Wednesday. The show will be about uh, around 20 minutes. This is from the PlayStation I think blog. it's 8, a- 8 a.m. Thursday morning for us. Yeah, so the show will be around 20 minutes in length. Uh, reasonably short. It, w- uh, However, it won't be focused on just one game. Sony says that the broadcast will feature third-party titles across PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4 with no further information given. Hmm. But it's just upcoming third-party titles. What do you think? What are you uh, feeling? Call of Duty. Has there been a big Vanguard trailer yet? There has. Yeah, but with the with it being a week out from that, oh with yeah, yeah, deal with Sony. I would imagine yep. it will pop up at some point. Um, I'm hoping to see some Final Fantasy, but that's not going to happen because it didn't happen at Tokyo Game Show. I doubt it's going to happen here. And um, it's not very. It's not very long. You so probably yeah, like, like five, six mi- games 20 at twenty minutes is, pro- is is not that long. I guess it'll show some stuff that's coming out before Christmas. I would imagine. 
Yeah, but there's like there's not I March. Think, I guess. I don't know. I've got no idea what they, what they could show. Well, because that's one of those things that like, we know what's happening, as we discussed before. We know what's happening in the first part of next year. There's not like it's pretty. It's fucked. I don't want to talk about it. We'll, we'll talk about it later, but um, <laughs> like this this isn't going to be the next. Is this going to be the next six months? And mm-hmm. even then, like not in twenty minutes, you can't really. Yeah. Twenty minutes is at best. Like let, let's say that let's say they're looking at like two three minute trailers. With some intermissions between each one, we're, we're probably looking at, yeah, like five to six games. Yeah. And like no gameplay, it's probably going to be trailers. Yeah. Ghost White Tokyo will be in there because it'll, it'll get the Deathloop trip and we'll see it like a thousand times for the next year. <laughs> well, at least we won't see Deathloop again. That's true. Are we sharing the love or is it... I think sharing the love has been fun. Yeah, we can share the love if you want. Like Sony it. patents, Max. Sony is currently been catching some flack online for a patent that almost immediately sounds like a bad idea. Registered in January of 2020, but approved only recently, the patent outlines a potential PlayStation feature that will allow streamers and their viewers on services such like Twitch to either temporarily or permanently remove players from multiplayer games. Yeah, this is legit. This is actually a thing. I looked at the diagram. It's fucked. The patent, the, the the patent and rather detailed, sorry, the patented and rather detailed flowchart shows the process of spectators deciding to remove or quote bench players who aren't pulling their weight. Oh fuck, I'm rooted. Players can also be sent messages telling them to play better, and that there's even mention of viewers paying to have people kicked from their game. That won't be abused. It all seems to come down to a voting system, which can be influenced by a player's supposed skill level. My skill level is shit. Yeah, so the flowchart is like essentially basically a bunch of like if statements, like if skill is bad, you can hit this button and it will shoot them a message saying... You poo. Either play better next round or you're going to get kicked from the game. Yeah. It's a really shitty system. Um, and with Sony stepping into the... E, uh, there was a few stories early last year, I think, from memory, where Sony kind of stepped into the esports genre. Mm-hmm. Um, this is concerning. Yeah. Now, again, most patterns turn into nothing, but uh, being able to play an online multiplayer game that you're essentially going to be voted on by viewers to be removed from the game kind of seems really shitty mm-hmm. and won't at all be abused. 100% going to be abused and I can't wait. No, I can't. It's going to be horrible. Like for someone like myself who actually has a low skill level, nor do I play multiplayer games anyway, but like my concern is, yeah, like the way that this could and will be abused by either the streamers themselves or the audience, like it's it's not good, man. Now, granted, it's not going to be used in an esport capacity. Like you're playing on an esport and then someone just kicks you the fuck out. Like yeah. not going to happen. But this, this seems to be, this just seems to have the potential for absolute predatory behavior. <laughs> In like as well, let's just target the and fact that this they're individual. like we're going to allow you to send messages saying uh, get good, get good, play better. Like that seems concerning. Yeah, especially if like, an individual may have various challenges, like a bit maybe abilities challenges. Therefore, they can't play any better. They're just playing the best they can. You're like get fucking better. <laughs> yeah, rough. Hopefully that doesn't come. And look, it's hard. Well. Look, it's hard enough being men in our thirties who. <laughs> We f- work full time jobs. We have families, and we want to like let's just have some time with. Like, we don't have the times that all you fucking young kids do to just get really, really good at a game, and then to no to some fucking fluoro head. I mean I, ju- I mean, I just don't have the reflex speed yeah, anymore. I'm gonna sound like <laughs> such an old old fuck right now. Some some fluoro head prick on fucking Twitch. <laughs> you know, getting poggers in the chats, having people get there. You know, having people just want to play a game, getting kicked out. Yeah, it's all good. You know. And then they're like, oh, thanks for the biddies. Kick, kick this fuck guy out. Thanks for the uh, New PS5 firmware update released uh, earlier this week, uh, weighing in at around 915 meg, which improves more of the system performance. That system better be fucking rocking. Yeah. Next up, uh, PS5 is bigger than Switch. Well, <laughs> in a sale perspective, not in an actual physical. Bad headline, I mean, Max. I mean, it, both in physical and now in sale. 
<laughs> PlayStation 5 was the US, US's best-selling hardware platform in both units and dollar sales in September of 2021, ending a 33-month Nintendo Switch streak, uh, and it's the first time a system has outsold Nintendo Switch in the US since the PS4 did all the way back in November 2018. That's crazy. Don't worry, October's going to fix it because the Switch OLED came out, so <laughs> fuck it, it's back. Yeah, I, I sometimes forget how popular the fucking Switch is. And it's also readily available compared to PS5. Yeah. Because, like, right now, as they said, every PS5 that's being made is being sold. I mean, that's, in, that's, a, sold. that's impressive in itself that, you know, there's such a, a hardware limitation at the moment that it's still managed to actually outsell the Switch. I don't know who that is. That's crazy. That's, it'll be the ATO. Yeah, you're, you're under, <laughs> they want their money back. That's the, the latest scam call here. Oh, really? It's like, yeah, you've you've got outstanding warrants from the ATO. Please uh, give us all your details and $1,000 worth of uh, iTunes gift cards to pay off your fine. That because the ATO really <laughs> wants to get that fucking C, you know, they want to get the latest Taylor Swift album. It's the only way they can do it. Uh, next up, we have the Uncharted movie. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna sit this up and then let you. So, go. Uh, <laughs> uh, the trailer leaked earlier this week, uh, but was officially dropped yesterday morning at time of recording, uh, and the it will be releasing in cinemas February 2022. That's all I've put on this because I just could not care less about this movie. It looked terrible. Have you watched the trailer? Yeah. It looked terrible. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. feel kind of... It's in a weird situation for me. Like, they they took a they took a set piece straight out of one of the games and I True. just don't think... Well, I, again, I've said it a few times on the show. I haven't played these games. I've only watched them being played. And... Um, I just recognized that I recognized that the cargo plane one yep. it did not translate very well in my opinion. It looked very, it looked tacky, I guess is the word I might use. I don't know. I, I think it's not for me. See, that's the thing. It should be. We are the demographic. We are the hardcore of the hardcore. Well, I am. I've got fucking symbols tattooed on my arm, right? I am the one that they are trying to sell this movie to in in a fan base sense, right? Really, it's going to the masses, but that's fine. So, I... I Before you get into your rant, I should mention, uh, as Chris, we put in the chat... um, there was a there was a fan film with Nathan Fillion. Oh, that was as, so good. And that is now retrending on the internet. Good, because it's better. <laughs> Look at Ryan with those Squid Game marks on his arm. That's right. I'm I'm destined for this for the Squid Games. Uh but I should be the one that's fanboy in this fucking film. Uncharted movie forever. Like what what what's kind of been wanted? I would like I want to see it one day. It's not that. What's not doing it for you? So the, the couple of different things. I'm watching it and I look at it and I go, and I honestly kind of felt nothing mm-hmm. from it. So I didn't hate it. I didn't have a visceral hate reaction. I didn't even have a love reaction either. It was just a, you know, because I look at it and you see uh, uh, fucking Spider-Man, whose name I can't remember right now. Tom Holland. Tom, Tom Holland. Not even really be, uh, not even really be, nathan drake because he's not he's not charismatic he's not being like charming he's not being witty he's being unnecessarily stoic for whatever reason Mm -hmm. marky mark looks nothing like sully and he's not playing sully he is but he's not delivering sully if anything he probably could have pulled off drake which is dumb seeing the woman playing chloe was really cool i was like oh shit i didn't know chloe was gonna be in this so i did pop a little bit at seeing like a really good looking chloe like she got the hair she got the jacket she got the look like that ticked a box for me i was like sweet i didn't know she was gonna be in it fucking a like she actually looks like the actress she kind of looks like claudia black which is mm-hmm. very inspired of what chloe is because this it's the voice actress um so i'm like cool that's that's a thumbs up right there. And then, yeah, they, they steal straight two, uh, two set pieces from the Uncharted games, which also makes no fucking sense because they pull the, as you said, the cargo plane scene from Uncharted 3 and then additionally the pirate ship in the cave system uh, that we see in Uncharted 4. So this movie m- was meant to be a prequel to the to the games from a timeline perspective, yet then pulls two set pieces from things that happen so staggeringly in the future. Is this like some fucking Doctor Strange multiverse of madness nonsense? Yeah. I don't know what it is. So it, that that is interesting. To, uh, I'm like, okay, how are we going to tie all these pieces together? Because 
you know, it's it's cool. Like you've made them and they look great ish. But mm, yeah, okay, mm, okay, sure. Well. I'm not excited. I will see it. I'm not excited for it. I'm not excited for it. It's just another thing to do in February. Pretty I much. One thing I'm kind of oh, fucking February. <laughs> One thing I'm kind of excited for after seeing the trailer this morning was the new GTA GTA trilogy. So the well, Grand you know, Grand Theft Auto until I saw the price tag. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto the trilogy, the definitive edition. Dumb name. Uh, trailer uh, finally released overnight, and it looks fucking dope compared to its ps2 predecessors it does have higher resolution textures it's got completely revamped lining draw distances are a thing in the past uh but crucial improvements include a gta 5 inspired con uh, con, uh, con what control, control. scheme <laughs> at a fucking stroke as previously reported but it also expanded to instant mission restarts and improved targeting because that when you go back and play it it's real rough uh you'll now be able to set waypoints like in more modern open world games while the weapon and radio selection wheels have been given a facelift all of this is in addition to all three titles running at 60 in 4k on your ps5 so it's very much the the, just, the just, skeleton of the game is there they've reskinned it so it does still look polygonal but it looks better polygonal uh yeah i also want to add to this um revealed this morning too gta 3 from this definitive edition trilogy will be released on PlayStation now. Doesn't help us. GTA San Andreas is heading to Games Pass, and the game that most is most likely to be the fan favorite of Vice City is going to no service. So I wonder if you're going to be able to buy them separately if they're being offered separately. I believe the that you can on the two different services. I remember somewhere being something with the being separately. Yeah. But either way, and yes, as of last week, crispy, uh, the OG GTA games got removed from the store, so you'll have to buy the new ones. Yeah. So the PS, so it's very similar to the World of Warcraft. Uh, no, sorry, the Warcraft Three Reforged scenario, where the original is now unavailable. So if you bought it, rad. I always put it off because it's fifty bucks. Seemed like a lot of money. Um. So now that make me pay a hundred. <laughs> which is a bit fucked but no the, look it does look better it, does. it unquestionably it looks, better. looks better okay it's it, it does look like an old game but it looks like the best version of the old game so I mean, the cars the themselves is, as long as it doesn't play like that old game because yeah. they played rough yeah so the cars themselves look better like they all have a, a, a reflections of you know like the the bonnets are all reflecting the lights are better and draw distance i didn't realize the draw distance was so shitty yeah in the because like they show a nice side by side it's like here's the original swipe over it here's the the next gen version and like it is noticeable like oh, yeah. it's like fuck me that is a massive improvement so i'm very excited is not is a hundred bucks worth the price no however no for those of in australia uh i know eb games are doing a trade deal for it yeah uh to trade any two games knock it down to 29 bucks oh that's 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 a better way to go about it <laughs> for those what, what game what games can i fuck for, off for those people who have disc consoles yes digital eat a dick i guess <laughs> let's talk some more delays ryan because why not oh fuck me elden ring has been delayed from its original 21st of january date to the 25th of february because nothing else is coming out in february developer from software writes quote the depth uh, and the depth and strategic freedom of the game exceeded our initial expectations uh thank you for your trust and patience there is some good news however signups are currently live for a network test to play mid november so this which, is this uh, is more a you thing for. than me so because you're all damp for the look for the it's only room. a month if they need an extra month to make it pretty make it run well bug fix cool but God, does it have to be in February, man? Like this is, so for context, this is coming out, I think 10 days after Horizon, four days after Destiny 2's DLC. That's going to be a big one. Uh, I've got Dying Light 2 coming in February. I put it, we're in a, we're in a, we're in a chat with a, with a couple of friends who do uh, similar stuff to us. And I put a picture in there of, there's like 12 games on that list and put them in the chat only two of them have crosses on them that I have no interest in playing. That's very concerning for me. <laughs> February sucks. Especially as we've had troubles with the last two weeks of just <laughs> meeting the games. Like we've had like, was it six games that we've had to sort of play for review in the last three weeks? <laughs> and we're like, oh my God, this is insane. And then we haven't even like touched February yet. It's not good. 
Like, look, once I have again. A, I have a feeling, and, and it sucks for me to say this, but it has a feel, I have a feeling that Dying Light 2 comes at the start of the February. I'm going to have that finished by by the end of February. I'm going to play mm. the crap out of that game. I have a feeling that Horizon is going to get pushed for me. <gasps> I have a feeling that Elden Ring, if my choice is to play <laughs> Elden Ring or play Horizon, I think personally it's play Elden Ring for me. Which is well, that's a, that's which is great because you're not going to play it, so you can play Horizon. I'll play Horizon. I'll review Horizon. <laughs> Easy done. Like like problem solved. Really. Like we we'll, like, we'll redistribute. And I'll, and I'll get I'll get to Horizon when I get to Horizon. But yeah, I know blasphemous to say that on a yeah. We're gonna have to look at the at the month and like literally map it out. Like there's only two of us too, which makes it fucking hard. <laughs> you know, uh, Destiny's gonna be that for me, Crispy. When I get sick of Elden Ring, I'm gonna be playing the new Destiny two expansion. <laughs> Oof. See, I have no poos about that. So I, my month looks probably okay. Yeah, your month is probably fine. It's like, ah. Oh, like Dying Horizon, Light, cool. sweet. Woo. Horizon, woo. <laughs> Elden Ring, yeah. I think what about us is that I think um, the remasters of Life is Strange is in there. Yeah. I think um, that, that um, oh, what's that? What's that movie? Oh, Saints Row is in Feb. Yeah, Saints Row is in Feb. I'll be playing that. That, that movie game, that, that horror movie, uh, oh, what's that? Dawn, Dawn of the Dead? Uh, dead dead what's that horror movie with the necronomicon with sam that- I- I- evil dead evil dead that game's coming out in february february's fucked like what else what else can be delayed into february everything i jokingly said playstation we're going to announce at the state of play that horizon's being moved mm. to a better month <laughs> just to accommodate me but yeah <laughs> Uh, and next up on the uh, delay, we have CD Projekt Wen. The company has pushed back the release dates for both Cyberpunk 2077 that was a good and The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Complete Edition on PlayStation 5. The two current gen ports were originally set to launch this year. A statement from CDPR reads, quote, Based on recommendations supplied by our, t- by our teams supervising the development of both games, we have decided to postpone their releases until 2022. Thank God they're finally listening to their teams. It goes on to reveal that Cyberpunk is currently planned for the first quarter of 2022, while The Witcher 3 is aiming at the second quarter of 2022. It concludes, quote, apologies for the extended wait, but we really have to get this right. (laughs) Don't forget, Cyberpunk came out last year. (laughs) <laughs> they're still doing it <sighs> like my stance <laughs> on CD Projekt Red back in the day was always this is not the studio you think it is everyone thinks that they're this beacon of fucking awesome and that they, they, they were like the you know the fucking studio for the gamers they ain't and like we saw we saw very quickly that they weren't when this whole cyberpunk stuff went down and they still haven't done it this was part of their like part of their agreement to make things you know make things right quote unquote like how fucked is this game no one's going to give a fuck into like next year no one gives a fuck now like it's such it's so weird like they're going to it's going to keep pushing until like just fade off into the distance you know and then i Look, I just don't fucking get it. I do not understand how the co- this company has been able to do it the way they have been. Yeah, it's just it's just genuinely baffling to me. And they yet they still see success somehow, at least fiscally. From I mean, that's because they have their own gaming service. Yeah, with with Gog obviously is a big is a big part of that. But I just I I can't. I I look. Okay. Part of me is a little bit enjoying the crumbling of this year that everyone held so lo- so high, and I'm like, they're not that good. And I'm loving watching them crumble in a real kind of like sadistic part of me. And I probably shouldn't, but there's that. And in terms of the next-gen version of Witcher 3, just fucking work on Cyberpunk. Fuck you doing? I, I, I would actually be more happy if they just gave up on Cyberpunk and just did Witcher 3. Yeah. It's bad. Quick bits, Max. Yeah, I somehow gave them to you again, but mm. I've got one to add at the end. So Sweet, I, I got one. There's a couple I want to add as well. Okay. First one, God of War 2018 is releasing on PC on the 14th of January 2022 and is being developed in-house at Santa Monica. This is on the back of it selling 19.5 million units. What? It's interesting when... Um, That's so many. It's interesting when we all thought that Nixus was being brought in to do PC ports and Santa Monica's like, no, we got this, guys. Man. So... 
I, I this is contrary to I guess popular opinion, but I'm fucking stoked for this. Yeah, apparently it supports ultra widescreen. It's going to be it, really awkwardly. It's probably going to be the best way to experience this game. Yeah, man. And like I, I, I is everyone you may knows blow my computer up if I try and play it. You know, anyone that's ever watched the show before, uh, you know, on the record, it is for me. It's not just one of the great, the greatest game of 2018. It is one of the greatest games of all time for me personally. And if that means that there are more people in this world that can experience it, then fucking go ham. I would love to play it again on PC, but my PC sucks bum. So it would actually probably look worse than if I played it on PS5. So I am very happy to have it come across because where is it at right now? It's free if you have a PS5 in the PlayStation Plus collection. They've sold 19 and a half million units. Where it's, can it's, they go? It's Where, theoretically run its course. Theoretically, the they've hit their base. cap. So why not share the love? Yeah. From a from a business side, share the love. From a personal side, share the love. Yeah. Like in this room, there are what? One, two, three statues. There's a custom controller. There's a fucking ax on the wall. This game means the world to me. And I want more people to experience it. So it's a fucking win for everyone. Uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla Viking Age Discovery Tour is also, is now live. Uh, and Ubisoft has Ubisoft, sorry, has allegedly given the go-ahead to the first mainline Splinter Cell game in almost a decade, according to development sources reported by VGC. I'll believe it when I see it. What's the one you want to add? Uh, Blue Box Game Studios. Oh, that's what I was going to add! <laughs> Uh, took to Twitter earlier this week uh, complaining that they are receiving death threats for the trailer they still haven't provided us with. Who? Who the fuck are giving you death threats? No one has spoken about you. No one is talking about you. Everyone forgot who you were, Blue Box Games. So now you're trying to pull out this pity party? No. You fucked it. Like, asterisk. Don't fucking death threat people. Just don't. Just stop being dumb fucks about it. Just don't do it. Return to my rant. Who? <laughs> like, you, you could have slunk away into the darkness. You could have got away with, with, with it all. Instead, you popped your head back up like a fuckhead. And then always, and then now you're back in the conversation reminding everyone of how you let everybody down. How you lied. How you have yet to deliver anything. I'm so glad I brought this up. Like, it makes me sound like such an asshole that you, apparently they're re receiving in-person and online threats. So, if, you know, Har Haram, what the fuck, is a real person, allegedly, he's... Like, to me, that reads, we're getting digitally and in-person threats because we're real people. In case we're not sure where we are, real people. Blue Box is a real studio. Everyone can go there and go yell at us. I know this makes me sound horrible. I don't believe it. <laughs> I really don't believe it. Yeah. It's hard. Hey, it's hard. No, they can fuck themselves. Look, yeah, it sucks that that is the case. Like, you know, it's just a game, guys. Yeah, like, that part of it in terms of... It's just a game. Yeah, that, that part of it in terms of, like, like don't death threat people. Yeah. I, I understand. Who knows what they're doing? It's not happening. Never happened. The more hate mail you send them and they have to read, the longer it takes for them to release it. <laughs> oh, and additionally, uh, Dbrand, uh, they have come back into the, the plate market uh, by releasing uh, PS5 side plates. They got around it, according to what you've told me. Yeah, so their loophole is apparently that the, the lawsuit was based on the <clears throat> fact that the plates are patented design so they've changed the, the design the, yeah the shape itself so they've changed the design of the plate yeah so like the dracula collar is the part like the part that makes it look very much of like a vagina <laughs> is what is patented they patented the vagina um <laughs> so if you can make it look like um a, something else then you can make cool side plates yep oh, it looks shout out to sony patent the vagina <laughs> keep going what's next uh we have the top 10 best-selling playstation 4 games <clears throat> in australia for the week ending the 17th of october uh number 10 insurgency sandstorm number nine call of duty cold uh black ops cold war number eight god of war 2018 number seven demon slayer number six red dead redemption 2 i don't number five. remember the, all the extra words i actually don't know all the words unless they're written in front of me okay. and that text is way too small to read from back here uh number five 2k 2022 
can can't even read that number yeah, four good. back for blood number three gta 5 number two fifa 22 and number one again far cry 6 shout out to far cry 6 well done shout out to back for blood oh, yeah well. Uh, and this insurgency sandstorm's getting some love. Yeah, I think it's on sale. <clears throat> oh, okay. Oh, my God, it was on sale, that's for sure. And so is Red Dead. Red Dead's like 20 bucks. And Demon's like came out this week, so. Yeah. Uh, but here are the upcoming titles for your PlayStation device, PS4 and PS5. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy on both consoles on October 26th. Riders Republic to both consoles on October 28th. Free weekend at the moment. Free trial weekend. Yeah, uh, no, apparently it's just straight up the first... You can play the first four hours for free. Oh, that's pretty bad. Uh, Voice of Cards, The Isle Dragon Roars, PS4 on October 28th. And Fatal Frame, Maiden of Blackwater, PS4 and PS5, October 28th. Not a whole lot. Um, Guardians, I'm, I forgot I'm, that was coming. I'm, I totally forgot about Guardians too. I'm also pretty keen to check out Voice of Cards because I think that's the new Yoki Tori game who did... Um, Nia. Yeah. Uh, None of that. Like, yeah, I know. I know. It's, it's, yeah. it's a me game, not you game. Yeah. But. Well, Riders, I played the beta went nah. So uh, <laughs> that, that was an, that was an easy. The same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that's an easy one for us. No, like so next week, Guardians. I'm gonna have to wait and see what the reviews are. I'm not super keen. Um, and even then. Pfft, so this coming week for us, this is making up playing playing all the games that we probably should have finished a review already. Mm, that backlog. Mm, damn <laughs> that, backlogs. Damn backlogs. <laughs> Uh, anyway that is the end of this week's episode back in person feels good the energy is different as you said it's just a whole fucking experience (laughs) when you're when you're in person it's so good so good like is how long were we doing it i lost count was it like july i lost count there was a two-week period when i came back and then we went back into lockdown the issue is every time we went into a lockdown, they're like, "Don't worry, guys. Seven days, seventy-seven later." <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's been, it's been, yeah. It's been a long time, but we're glad to be back, and we're also glad that you, the individual, has taken the time to watch this show and consume it in your ear holes, whether it be here on the YouTube's or wherever. So, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to us bullshit about PlayStation again for another week. Uh, we would love you if you could would be to share the word. Get us out there. Help tell your friends. If they're like, oh man, you know, it's it's such a nice day today. And they're like, well, have you heard of this PlayStation podcast? <laughs> uh, <laughs> just drop it. Random conversations. Next time you go to Optus or whatever, just fucking put it in the podcast app. Just give us the downloads or whatever. That's fine by us. No, I look. I, we like we have no desire to ever be the biggest fucking thing, but more listeners wouldn't hurt. <laughs> is what I'm getting at. Uh, All right, Max, send us home. All right, everybody. This PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 8 a.m. on podcast services, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and 9 a.m. on those YouTubes. If you'd like to take part in future conversations with us, come and check out our socials. Facebook, Discord, Instagram, and Twitter. All of those links can be found in the description below. If you want to join us as the conversation happens, head over to twitch.tv slash thepopcultures where you can watch us record this show live, where you can uh, jump in the chat and become part of the show. If you want to support the show, you can. Tell your friends, tell your family about this PlayStation pod. If you are on podcast services, be sure to give us a five-star rating and a written review. If you are on the YouTube channel, to like, subscribe with a comment below. I endeavor to answer every single question comment if you want to support us financially you can at patreon.com slash the pop cultures as well as our merchandise store across the compsite shop we can buy shirts and other assorted shit with our logos on it but until next week i'm ryan betson i'm max cooper and that was for the players we we <laughs>